a lavish new drama now for BBC Two and your chance to experience the excitement of the ballet premiere that sparked a riot in 1913. Stravinsky's Rite of Spring. In Paris, in 1923, I was accosted, as ever, by Gertrude Stein. Ten years, Mr. Diaghilev, can you believe it? And I said, since what, Miss Stein? And she said, since that extraordinary night. And I said, but I wasn't aware you were there. And she said, of course I was there. And I said, at the first performance? And she said, well, not actually the first performance, but I was at the second and wasn't it an absolute riot? And I said, you mean the second performance? And she said, no, the first. And then suddenly she sighed and said, ah, Nijinsky. And I asked what she meant, but she found she could say nothing. And indeed, neither could I. Our Russian friends are back. <laughs> the god Nijinsky has descended once more on Paris. You hear that, man? So they think you're a god. Nijinsky leaps so high he touches the stars. Clever boy. You've got our season off to a flying start. Company. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
My children, my dear, dear children, we are about to change the course of history. We have dared to dream and dared to risk, and now Paris holds her breath. After the 29th of May, ballet will never be the same. How far we have climbed together, and how close we are to the summit. From the moment I heard Stravinsky's score, from the very first moment, I knew it to be a work of genius. Don't you think, my dear, there's just a little too much noise? Where, exactly? Ah, well, perhaps from start to finish. Perhaps I should explain, Sergei Pavlovich. Yes, that might be best. I had a dream, mm -hmm. a fleeting vision of a pagan rite, yes. in which a young girl dances herself to death. She is a sacrifice to the god of spring, and that is the theme of this ballet. The terrible beauty of nature renewing herself, breaking through the earth. Oh, yes, I see. And this... <laughs> ...is what I hear, and I write what I hear. I am merely the vessel through which it passes. Believe me, Sergei, this is a work of genius, and it will be recognized as such. I don't know when, but I swear it will. And I can wait. It is very important to wait, and I have already learned how to wait. But I know, I know that people will say, before I die, the right of spring defines the new century. Yes, my dear, but will it sell tickets? Oh, Siriosha, Siriosha! It's a new theater, remember, and Monsieur Astrock has invested a fortune. And it will make him a fortune, and it will make you a fortune, and it will make me a fortune, and you will have not only Le Toupari eating out of your hand, but you will have the whole planet eating out of your hand. And you know better than anyone how genius rubs off on people. Perhaps you might play it again. And genius is together, we will make our final step to immortality. Mr. Najinsky. With the inspired assistance of Marie Rambert, dearest Mimi, and under the watchful eye of Mr. Brigoriev, our company manager, will, I promise you, make you shine like stars. Continue to do their bidding, and all will be well. Any questions? Good. Sir. Dear boy. To do Mr. Najinsky's bidding, sir, allows us no freedom of expression. You are always free to express yourselves, Menshikov. As much as we were when Mr. Fokin was our choreographer. 
All for the best, my dear. All for the best. With respect, sir. This is not a propitious moment. Will Mr. Fokine be returning to the company? Mr. Fokine felt he had no more to offer. At which point, Menshikov, it is always best to move on. Don't you think? Too much lip, that boy. Jump! Feet turned in! Again! Are you sure this is right? Again! And jump! I'm sorry. I have the most terrible headache. Again! But we're all hurting. Can't you see that? Yeah. These jumps are nearly killing us. This is the way it is. So do it. Again. Jump. Again! With respect, sir, I, are you sure this shouldn't be played on a saxophone? I am fully aware of the difference between a saxophone and a bassoon, sir, and with respect, sir, I am quite sure that this should be played on a bassoon. The fingering, maestro, it's very difficult. You're doing very well. Try again. <laughs> Mr. Nijinsky's point is that your body is no longer an escape for the soul, as in previous ballets, but, but arrests and contains it. What he is striving for is at one with the designs of Mr. Rorick, inspired by the paintings of the primitives in which, in which the figures are twisted, the knees turned in, the arms bent outwards. Your faces must have no expression, but be as though asleep with the eyes open, like statues. There is no romance here, no individualism. It is a communal, depersonalized world, and though our ballet has grown from, from ancient tradition, it could perhaps be seen as a metaphor for the tragedy of modern life. We'll try again. <clears throat> Everybody's talking about it, Sergei Pavlovich. I know, my dear, isn't it marvellous for you and your theatre? They're saying there's lots of stamping. Oh, I'm sure there is. Lots of it. And no tutus? Oh, no, definitely no tutus. Pagans didn't wear them. I just worry that... What, my dear? Well, this being a new theatre, and so much invested in it, and the cost of this production, 50 dancers? Sergei Pavlovich? A hundred musicians? Thrilling, isn't it? And you're rather, well, uh, astronomical percentage. A snip. It's the future I'm thinking of. My, my reputation, the theatre's reputation, if the ballet is too... extreme. Have I ever let you down? No, Sergei Pavlovich. No, you've never let me down. And I never will. Oh, it's positively tropical. Have you actually seen the ballet yet? 
Oh, no, my dear, I would never interrupt the creative process. And there, there's the press, sir, you Pavlovich. Ah, the press. They keep badgering me about whose idea it actually was, and to be honest, I haven't a clue. Well, Stravinsky claims it was his idea. Stravinsky? Yes, he had a dream about a virgin dancing herself to death. Can you imagine? So shall I tell them that? No, I wouldn't do that because Rerich, you see, told me it was his idea. Rerich? Really? Yes, a queer fish, but such a fine artist. So, shall I say Rerich? Well, you could, but Nijinsky is now insisting it was his idea. He's such a naughty boy. And I sometimes wonder whether I didn't think of it myself. Is that of any help? Last year in Monte Carlo, Diaghilev came to me very excited and said, Pierre, my dear, Stravinsky has written the most extraordinary new piece that you absolutely must hear and dragged me into this rehearsal room where Stravinsky banged it out on an old baby grand. I didn't understand a note, and it gave me the most appalling headache. But did you like it? No, I detested it. What do you think of it now? I still detest it. <laughs> then why, sir, did you agree to conduct it? Ah, well. It is totally original, totally new. He has reinvented the whole rhythmic system with new time signatures for each bar, and his melodies and harmonies like nothing we have ever heard. My dear, this is musical dynamite. He told you this, I suppose. It's years ahead of its time. Then why are we doing it now? Because it's a masterpiece. Put your hand on your heart and tell me that you like it. Oh, Pierre, my dear, don't be so stern. I'll give you a hundred musicians. They won't fit into the pit. And it will cause an absolute sensation. No. And, of course, it will make us all very, very famous. Well? He loves it! Mr. Diaghilev, you see, is very persuasive. Lovely colour, isn't it? It's flannel. Yes, specially chosen by Mr. Rurik. And this will go like so. With this on top. That's right, isn't it, Mr. Rurik? Oh, my God. No! 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 Lee! Reach up to the heavens! You're the chosen virgin! The sacrificial victim! No, leap to mean it! These are your last moments on Earth! Again! And jump! And eight! And nine! And jump! And go! No! No, 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 no! It's ten. It's ten and go. I'm sorry. Again. And jump and stay and three and four and stay and stay and jump and eight and nine and jump and... No! No! Jump and eight and nine! Jump and eight and nine! Excuse me, sir, but I thought I might shut the window. <clears throat> Mustn't forget we've got a show tonight. We, uh, don't want any chills, do we? Ladies? Again! Well, it's getting there. Good.
Miroslav, look who's come to see us. Our good friend, Lady Ottoline Marl. No, no, my dear. No. It is I who should bow to you. You are too kind, Lady Ottoline. That was utterly, transportingly beautiful. Too, too kind. How you lose yourself so completely, embody the very essence. It's almost a miracle. A miracle, Vaslav, you hear? How is your new ballet? Goes. goes marvellously. One has heard such stories. The town's agog with anticipation. I can hardly wait to see it in London. He's very tired. You must take care now. It will be something great. It will light the world with the rays of the sun. It will be new. And it will be beautiful. Of course it will. How could it be anything other? Very well, thank you. Is it true? A virgin is sacrificed. Wait and see, wait and see. Mr. Jinsky, why are all the dancers so unhappy? Tittle tattle, my dear chap. Mr. Jinsky, is there any tensions between you and Stravinsky? They have never for a second failed to be an absolute communion of thought. Why can't Mr. Jinsky speak for himself? He has more important things on his mind. Thank you, gentlemen. So, Vatsa, Vatsa, what do you like? No more questions, thank you. Utterly transportingly beautiful. To Lady Utterly Moral. <laughs> Whoa. They think I'm an idiot. They think you're a god. What do you think I am? I think you're mine. And you? I think I'm this. And then I think I'm that. They'll crucify me. Oh, no. I don't think so. No, no. This really is too common. That way so so obliging. I imagined him fitting quite snugly between us. I like women, Suryosha. Oh, dear. You know that. You don't know women, my sweet. Especially tarts. Oh, heavens. Especially Parisian tarts. They're my favorites. Stravinsky hasn't been on to you, has he? What is he trying to prove? I've always had my doubts about him. Dressed to the nines and pansying around. Makes Proust look like a docker. Look. Look up there. We must never despair, Suryosha, for there is a god. That's no more than a beautiful cupola over a beautiful earth. Then why do you pray? 
Just in case. I'm grateful, you know. There's no need, my dear. Of all people, you have meant the most. I'd give you everything. Forgive almost anything. Don't ever leave me, Vasla. Frightened. Well, don't think, feel. Again. Out and five. And out. No more. No more. It's ugly. Having the leg like that. It feels so ugly. I'm sorry, I don't think I can do it. It's against everything I've ever learned. It has no grace, no beauty. It's horrible. Horrible. I think perhaps we should... Again! Nothing's going on, is it, between him and Rombert? No, sir. Good, good. What about him and Pilt? No, sir. Nothing. Nothing at all. No. No, he'd never leave me. Gentlemen, if we might pick it up from the bar before 104. what I want. Too fast. That's what I wrote. Too fast for my steps. Then change your steps. Change your tempo. Perhaps if we try a little faster. And there are too many steps anyway. I imagine this section to be almost motionless, but you've turned it into a jumping match. I think, Mr. Stravinsky. And what's more, if you knew anything about choreography, you'd know that it shouldn't always reiterate the music, but sometimes work against it. It should realize its own form, but this, this, it's barely recognizable as dance. Wouldn't you agree, mademoiselle? Well, 
I see why you might say that, sir. Although I do think that Mr. Nijinsky, by re-emphasizing your beat, is doubling the impact of your music. You see, sir, what you have written is so innovative, so new, that Vaslav, in order to do it justice, has to find equally new forms of expression. It's like nothing we've ever seen before, because it's expressing something we've never heard before. Perhaps if you were to play, and Vaslav were to count, the correct tempo would emerge. Okay. I count to 25, we see where we come out. Even if we come out together, doesn't mean we've been together on the way. be a dancer? Then what do you want? Are you dumb? No. Um, people say I talk far too much and once I start I, I can't seem to stop and um, I've been like this since I was a little girl in Budapest. Um, th th that's where I'm from, Budapest. I'm Hungarian, you see. My parents said it's probably nerves and they're probably right and I'm nervous now. In fact, more nervous than I've ever been in my whole life. So the chances of my stopping talking So tell me, what do you want? Just one short answer, please. I want, want to see you dance. That's all. What's he up to, hmm? Not sure, sir. What do you mean, it's what you're paid for? Perhaps he went out for some air, sir. Just as a fawn? I'm meant out of here, sir, for a wander around the theater, sir. I mean to say, pretty stuffy, isn't it, sir? You've got to keep your eye on him, right? Right, sir. I saw every performance you did in Budapest, and then in Monte Carlo, and here in Paris. Don't you have anything else to do? This is all I want to do. 
My father told me that we only get one bite of the cherry. And frankly, Miss Nijinsky, I found the cherry that I want to bite. Sounds rather disgusting, doesn't it? I don't mean in any way to be indiscreet. But if I want something, then I simply have to have it. And I want to see you dance. And that's what I've been doing. It's terribly sad, don't you think? When you see people stuck in a rut, afraid to move on, and then it's too late. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, Miss Nijinsky. Us meeting like this is an accident so unlikely one might almost call it a miracle. That's very nice. Yes, it is, isn't it? But this is no accident. I always thought how lovely it'd be to say that to you if ever we met. To be honest, I picked it up from a book. <gasps> I've never seen you do that before. When you dance, were I the greatest poet or the greatest painter, I would never be able to express what I feel. seen you dance. For our happiness. For us. And then the left, right, no, yes, the right foot forward, and then... Four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Good. Now you. Yes, I like that. Yes. And you join. That's it. And we go up on our toes like birds with long, long legs. And one, two, three, four, five. Very nice. Again!
Rite of Spring, which the Russian Ballet will perform for the first time tonight at the Théâtre des Champs-Élysées, tighter, is the most audacious spectacle that Diaghilev's admirable troupe has ever attempted. Only these prodigious dancers are capable of expressing the stammerings of semi-savage humanity. Tighter! Hope against the most astonishing polyrhythms ever heard. More! I can't go any further, sir. This thrilling event is bound to set the town alight. I should have been a journalist. Absolutely, sir. It's in every paper, sir. Lost weight, don't you think? really most extraordinary, all to do with barbaric rites and virgins and what have you. Who <laughs> wouldn't get away with it in St. Petersburg, but quite a showman, old Diaghilev. Oh, yeah, certainly that. No, he is the most frightful sodomite. He's at his most perfect in feed, don't you think? Or perhaps better, the very perfume of a rose. It's his phone I adore, like an animal, not human at all. Phone? <laughs> no. He danced like an angel, but he choreographed like a retard. And as for this new one, some frightful prehistoric ritual, apparently. I mean, to say good heavens. You mean Nijinsky's not in it? Uh, not in the new one, no. This place is hideous, like a Kraut's bunker. I rather like it. It's damned unpatriotic. And while there's no doubting the extraordinary audacity of Stravinsky, and you know, of course, that he's very influenced by Gauguin, whom he absolutely adores, he told me so himself, I'm convinced that this audacity is entirely accidental. After all, for most of the time, he's away from the hub of things in Switzerland, en famille. Who's but the person who's bound to get the side down is that dreary man, Rurik. Too mediocre for words. And his accents, oh, so slack. I doubt I'll witness a more important work in my lifetime. It's completely unique. You think so? Oh, yes. And I managed to sneak a look at the, uh, the score beforehand. And uh, I, I tell you, it is the symphony of the future. You went to the dress rehearsal. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Diaghilev invited me. He invited me as well. <laughs> really? Yes, and I thought it was the most pretentious load of old bollocks I've ever seen. Philistinism, can't you smell it? Hanging like a winter smog. The latest exhibition, the latest restaurant, the latest offering from those quaint little ruskies in that queer new theatre. The poor little lambs are incapable of spontaneity. You pay good money. I'm not complaining. Neither am I, my dear, but I fear we have become like Monsieur Eiffel's Tower. <laughs> They just can't get enough. <laughs> so far, so good. Three eighty five. Four eighty five. In a few minutes, my children, the curtain will rise, and from that moment, there will be no turning back. You are about to make history. Farewell, La Belle Epoque. Welcome, 
the new age. You have all surpassed yourselves and we love you for it. And remember, whatever happens, keep going. Oi, back on the street, you old tart. <laughs> Isn't that? Big? Yes. It's much smaller than I imagined. Isn't everyone? So exciting. I can't help feeling they've made their minds up already. They've obviously come prepared. <laughs> Check the tapes on your shoes, last chance. Good luck, everyone.
good money to watch this rubbish.
How would you know? Sounds like cats fighting in a dustbin. Rather like it. They hissed Wagner in his 40s, you know. And I am still only 31. Animals. Perhaps I will witness my triumph too before I die. It's terribly sad, don't you think? When you see people stuck in a rut, afraid to move on, and then it's too late. A meeting like this is an accident so unlikely one might almost call it a miracle. It's very nice. Yes, it is, isn't it? But this is no accident. that by making his dancers deformed, they're somehow more authentic. Yeah, and Stravinsky, why does he believe that if a sound's ugly, it's somehow more primitive? Is it really too hard to imagine that savagery can be conveyed through the occasional chord that's consonant? Hmm? Pardon?
Cruz da Porta! Really, Antoine, you do talk people. setting my digestion. I rather like it. Thank you. 
needs a dentist. Needs a dentist? <laughs> They all do! Especially Nijinsky!
We did it. We got to the end. We did it. And we've got to do it all again on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. The flower of our love. Magnificent. Didn't I tell you? It sounded magnificent. I can't wait to hear it in the concert hall. Faster, where is Maria? Maria! Maria, you were superb! Excuse me! On! You must go on! Go! 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 Exactly what we wanted. To Paris. Yes, yes, to Paris. Mm. The bastards. Through innovation, great art, and good conscience, and scandal, <clears throat> and unspeakable misery. Are you not joining us, Vaslav? Don't you want to make a toast? They mocked us. Made us a laughing stock. And they can die laughing. But we, old chap, we shall live forever. That's right, my dear. Quite right. Because all of us have had the courage to step into the future. And let's be frank, one was bound to ruffle the odd feather or two. To the shock of the new. And bankruptcy. Let's hear it for bankruptcy. Prego assai, signor, vivo sola, soletta. No. I'll do it myself. Drifting off, eh? Miles away. You tired? Dreaming? No. Then what is it, my dear? What's on your mind? I'm cold.
Well, BBC Four has an award-winning documentary on Stravinsky next tonight, told in his own words and illustrated by rare film footage. And next tonight on Two, she was voted Radio 4's wittiest person. We pay tribute to the late Linda Smith.